Greetings everyone! In this video I will go over the changes in version 3.1 of Stylized Hair Pro. There are quite a lot of improvements and some exciting new stuff, so let's take a look. One thing I want to point out, remove the old version and install the new 3.1 version. But also if you have your old Node 3 imported into your working Blender file, you have to remove it so that the add-on can import the new node tree because they are different and there's changes to the new one. To do that, go to the outliner and from this menu you can select Blender file. Now go to the node groups. If you have a fresh Blender file, you won't have anything here. But because I have imported these from the previous version of the add-on, I have a lot. So I'm gonna delete them. Now I'm gonna add a new hair curve to the base mesh and when I add the stylized hair setup it will import the new node tree with all the updated stuff. Ok and now we can continue. Here in the updated profiles panel you can see the new layout and also there are two new profile types. We have the line, this is just a linear profile which is going to be useful if you want to create simple 2D hair cards. You can bend it one way or the other. And you can give it unevenness with the substrand settings. If I open the hair tip, you can see what it looks like. There's also a crescent. This is similar to the 2D line, but it has thickness, which uh, you can change from here. If you combine the bend with the flatness settings, you can create some interesting cupped hair geometry. Like this. Alright, the other thing I want to show you here, if I select the islands profile, We've got all these individual strands, but they all converge to the tip here. If we open the tip, these ones open as well. But now here we have settings for the individual tips. We can close them, inflate them, and round them off. These now should be a lot more useful if you want to create a quick hairstyle. Alright, now if you want a low poly curve, we can come to the settings and set lower values for the resolutions, something around 20. Ok, but now if I want to create a rounded off hair tip. I don't have enough geometry here to define that roundness. Ideally it should be smooth like this, but because we have low resolution it looks rough. We need more cuts here to define the shape. So we can increase the resolution of the curve and it starts to define a smooth shape, but now we are using well, about 10 times the resolution. So what I've created is a way to push the existing geometry towards one of the ends of the curve with this taper curve resolution setting. It will concentrate the resolution towards either the tip or to the root. And now as you can see we have a lot more geometry here so that it defines the smooth shape even though we are still using 20 curve points. Of course this comes at the expense of the other end which is now a lot less resolution. So you may want to add a little bit more to define it also. But yeah, you can use this setting to allocate more geometry where you think it's needed the most. Now let's talk about the new hair dynamics system. I've remade it completely from scratch so that now it should be a lot more stable and efficient. Previously there was a lot of trickery involved, the curves needed a follow object to detect the movement 
as well as to remove the parenting from the base mesh, which I kinda did sneakily behind the scenes when you enable the dynamics, but it was still a weird system. If you remove the parent and then try to edit the curve, it wasn't where you would expect it to be. It would be somewhere else in the scene, not where the character is. So I've made a new one. It still works the same, but underneath it's a totally different story. The deformations are now fully contained within the curve geometry. There's no need for an external photo object or to remove the parenting. In addition to that, I've added a few new main settings. Apart from stiffness and damping, there's elasticity, which will make the hair stretch a bit under movement. and liveliness, which will make the hair react more to subtle movements. We now have a proper effect factor and contrast, with which you can determine where on the curve you want the dynamics effects to be. You can make it, for example, to affect only the tips of the hair. You can now choose the strength and also the direction of the gravity force. There's also a new collision system. It is now a lot more performant when you're using a dense collider mesh. In addition to the offset distance, you can also set the strength of the repel force. This one is basically how hard the collider is pushing away the hair curve. If your hair is clipping through some surfaces, you can use stronger force However, then you get a lot more jitter. So there's a trade-off here. Lower force, less jitter, but more likely to clip through the collider surfaces. You can dial in some value that works for you. Now, while this is reactive to the movement, now we can also add some wind effects. In the quick menu, you can find it next to the hair dynamics. There's a little button. We can turn them on by increasing the wind force. Immediately, you can see it's starting to wave. With this, you can increase the speed. And turbulence is how much the hair will wave in the wind. You can make it very subtle or very wild. Okay, now with this, we can define the direction of the wind. But if you find this difficult to direct, you can use an effector object. I'm gonna bring up an empty and set it as the effector object. Now you can use this object to guide the wind. It will attract the hair curves towards it. If you want, you can set it to repel, and now the wind is gonna blow away from the effector. 
That way, you can either converge or diverge the hairs away or towards a certain spot in your scene. And it's a bit more convenient than setting up a direction vector. And keep in mind, these wind effects are stacked on top of the other effects, so you still have the movement dynamics. Ok, using this, you can easily create some interesting animations. Just one thing to be aware of. As of right now, there seems to be a bug in Blender, where if you have simulations like this from geometry nodes, if you undo, it will break the simulation. See, it's not working now. No matter what I do, disable, enable the dynamics again, nothing seems to help. I think it has something to do with caching the animation. I'm not entirely sure, but if you find that the dynamics are not working, it's probably because of that. One thing you can do is save your file and restart Blender, and then it should work. Or another thing you can do is you can make a duplicate of a hair strand, and on the new one, it's not working. Yeah, it seems to be a bug, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. So, that's the hair dynamics, have fun with them. When it comes to shading, you can now access the shades menu next to the materials here from the little button. There are a few updates and additions to the shade, but I'm not gonna talk about them right now because I want to make a full video on how you can use the Stylized Hair Pro to create a hair shader, since I see a lot of people asking about it. So in the next video, I'll make sure to do that, so stay tuned for that. If you want to convert your hair curve into a mesh, first, in the settings menu, set the resolution of the geometry. Then you can go right click, convert to mesh. And now we can work from here. However, what I've created is a mesh conversion panel. You can also access it from the quick menu, next to the settings. You can click on the button, and it will convert it to mesh. However, before you do, you can automatically generate an armature for the new hair mesh. Here you can set how many bones it should have, but like this, I don't really know, is this enough, is it not? It's difficult to say. So, with this checkbox here, it will show you a preview of the armature in the viewport. And now you have a visual feedback. So, set the number of bones. Usually we want the ones closer to the tip to be smaller, so we can taper the armature like this, make them smaller over here. And finally, let's check on parent to armature, with automatic weights, yes. And let's click on Convert Hair Curve to Mesh. Ok, and now we should have a fully rigged hair mesh. If you have another armature, which you probably do, your character rig, to join these generated ones, Select the hair armature and then your character and you can press Ctrl J. This will join everything to the active in the selection, which should be your character armature. Then you can find the head bone or any other bone. Then in edit mode, grab the root bone of the hair. Then select the head bone of the armature and you can go Ctrl P to parent, keep offset. And now your hair bone chain will move with the head. That's how you can connect these generated ones to the rest of your rig. If you have a curled hair strand, the generated armature will go where the original curve is. But if you want it to sit inside of the curl here, you can check on use curled curve. And now you can generate the armature properly inside of the curl. That way it will give you much more accurate deformations. So yeah, these are some of the new features that you can find. 
there's quite a few and I hope you find them useful. As I said in the next video, I'll show you the shades and how you can use them to create the hair shader. You'll see that it's really easy. So, see you there.